Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Nari Heshmati. I'm a board certified OBGYN in the North Puget Sound area near Everett, Washington. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about different baby positions, specifically breech and why that happens and what, that, what kind of implications does that have for your pregnancy and what can we do if you've got a breech baby. Now normally all of my videos are shot with some beautiful scenery from the Puget Sound area in the Pacific Northwest. I am in the Pacific, but I'm not in the Puget Sound. I'm, I'm right now on Kona, Hawaii, and this is just a beautiful background in the back of me, so I thought I had to shoot one of the videos here. So, you know, I'm gonna focus a lot on reach presentation, um, the different presentations that you'll see in pregnancy. Uh, everyone's familiar with cephalic or head down. That's the most common presentation. Uh, a little less common and less known is there's transverse, where a baby is actually sitting sideways. Now, we're not gonna focus a whole lot on that one, and that's because transverse babies only occur about one in 300 times at time of delivery. And the reason for that is, is if you think about the shape of the uterus, uh, as the pregnancy progresses, the baby's gonna wanna naturally flip one way or the other, meaning being either breech or cephalic. Uh, now, breech babies, that is somewhere about three or 4% of all pregnancies at term. Uh, usually those are just spontaneous, they just happen, and there's not a specific reason for breech presentation. Now, babies, like to fit in the proper way. That's just what's natural for them, and that's typically why you see such a small number of breech babies. Now, early on, babies can be breached because they haven't yet got into position, so it's not uncommon for someone to have an early ultrasound at 25, 26 weeks, and they come back to me in the office and they're very concerned because if my baby's breached, what do we have to do? Well, nothing yet because it's too early. So for instance, earlier than 28 weeks, about 25% of all babies are breached. Now again, by term, that number is down to three or 4%. Now, as I said, most breech babies occur just spontaneously. There is a small portion of breech babies that are for a specific reason, um, and that's about 15%. And you think, why would a baby want to sit head up, you know, versus head down and be breeched? Well, the most common reasons for that, if there is a reason, is number one, there could be something structurally abnormal in the uterus. So let's say somebody has fibroids, and those are the hereditary muscular growths that you'll see in the uterus. That can make it where a baby wants to sit free. Let's say there's something structurally abnormal with the baby uh, physically. Sometimes that'll make a baby want to seem and sit free. The other things that can make a difference is if there's a contracted pelvis. So certain pelvis types make it harder for a baby to sit cephalic or head down, so those babies are going to sit free. You know, some other risk factors we see, if there's a lot of fluid, there's plenty of room for a baby to move around so a baby can be breached. On the other hand, if there's too little fluid, babies can also be breached because they could kind of get stuck into that position. Uh, if there's more than one baby, so with twins, triplets, things like that, that throws off the dynamics and it's more common for a baby to be breached. The uh, other things that seem to come in is if you yourself were a breech baby, there's a higher chance you're going to have a breech baby. And that may have something to do with genetics and how the shape of the pelvis is. Now, if you previously had a breech baby, you've got about an 8 or 9% chance of having a breech baby with your next pregnancy. So again, that really lends itself to there's some reasons that are recurrent, but usually this is just something that happens. And now, contrast that with, let's say your last baby was head down, what are the odds of a breech baby the next time? usually only about two or three percent of the time. Now, how do you know if you have a breech baby? The, the most common easy thing is, you know, typically when a baby is cephalic or head down, you're gonna feel pressure down here and you're gonna feel kicking up here. Uh, if somebody has a breech baby, that's gonna be reversed. So they feel the head up here and they feel kicking low. The other way we can often tell is just by doing a physical exam. So there are these maneuvers called Leopold's maneuvers. They were named after Christian Leopold. He was a gynecologist in the 1800s, even taught uh, at a midwifery program for several years. And he came up with four movements uh, where we can basically place our hands on and try to determine how a baby is positioned. So oftentimes when we're getting the heartbeat, you'll see us kind of do a modification of that where we're putting our hands on and trying to figure out where the baby is so we can get the heartbeat. But that lets us also know how the baby is positioned. The other physical exam way is when we do a, a digital cervical exam, you can often feel the head from below. So that gives us an idea of what's going on. Uh, and then the, the most accurate way of determining how a baby is positioned is ultrasound. Now I point out ultrasound is a very recent thing in obstetrics. So ultrasound wasn't widely available until the 1970s and it first came about in obstetrics in the 1950s. They actually used the modification of the technology they would use to look for structural defects inside a ship. 
So now we have ultrasound, so that's the easy way if it comes down to it. If we think the baby's breached, we can pop an ultrasound on and take a look. Now, let's say a baby is breached, what implications does that have? You know, early on, we're just gonna kind of monitor that and not worry, but as we get closer and closer to term, we're gonna want that baby to be cephalic or head down, and the reason is we try not to do breech vaginal deliveries. Now, twins, that's a different story if the second baby is breached, so we're really gonna focus on singleton. There's one baby and it's breached, and the reason is, if you think about the size of the head, if you try to deliver a breech baby vaginally, there's a much higher risk of head entrapment where the baby's head gets stuck, there's a higher risk of cord prolapse where the cord comes down, so it's a much riskier thing and there's more dangers that can be. The other thing is since it's less safe to have a breech vaginal delivery and we're not really doing those anymore, the skill set and ability to, have to do a breech vaginal delivery has really declined. So we try to encourage people to have a C-section if they're still breech past around 39 weeks. But before that, let's say somebody is interested, we can try something called the external cephalic version. Now that's where we basically bring somebody in and we put a ton of gel on their belly and we're going to actually try to manually move the baby back into a cephalic presentation. We typically do that somewhere around 36 or 37 weeks and the reason for the timing is if you do it a lot earlier it's easier to flip but the baby could flip down. The other thing is if you do it early you don't want to risk delivering a baby prematurely and when you try an external cephalic version there is a risk of your water breaking of an emergency c-section being needed because of something bad on the heart rate tracing, the placenta abrupting or separating from the uterus. Now that's not very common, but we like the baby to be closer to term, but not too far along, so we don't wait till 39, 40 weeks while we can do a version at that point. If we've identified a breech baby, we want to do that version earlier because it becomes harder the further along you get because baby's going to be bigger. Now versions are successful about 50 or 60 percent of the time. There are some reasons that they're more successful than others. Um, if you do one under a spinal or an epidural, uh, and if you look at our video about pain meds and pregnancy, we talk about those, uh, versions are a little bit more successful. Uh, some people don't like to do them under spinal epidural because of the concern that since somebody is numb, could we press too hard? Uh, do we risk more injury? And the other thing is, uh, whether successful or not, if you, if you do a spinal or an epidural, we've got to wait for that to wear off before we can send somebody home. So oftentimes we don't do it with that. Now, if you've had a version, uh, you probably had turbutylene. That's a shot we give people that relaxes the uterus. And what we want to do is we want to relax that muscle because the uterus is just a big muscle to help us uh, do that version. Now, that does make your heart race, so people who've had turbutylene will always know it. If you're RH negative, you'll get a Rogam shot after a version. And we'll do a video later on RH negative that explains everything about Rogam. And, you know, we'll basically try to flip the baby. Uh, and again, 50, 60 percent of the time, we're going to be successful with that. Now, what are things that don't work? Uh, oftentimes, patients will ask, well, can I sit in a certain position? What if I turned upside down? Can I do anything like that? Positional changes don't seem to make a difference. Uh, moxibustion and acupuncture, that was something that was talked about for a while. And moxibustion is where they're taking a, a Chinese herb and they're burning it next to the fifth digit of the toe. And what they're basically, that's supposed to be a pressure point that's supposed to help a baby turn to a cephalic presentation. And there's some recent studies on that that say that doesn't also help. So, uh, you know, basically external cephalic version is really the only thing we've got if a baby doesn't spontaneously turn. Now, I wouldn't worry uh, necessarily if you were interested in a version or if one's not successful because past 36 weeks, the rate of a baby spontaneously going to cephalic or head down is about 25%. So, you know, it's not something that absolutely means the chance is zero. But if the baby is still breached come 39 weeks, uh, Generally, we're going to be talking to you about a C-section because that's the safest way to deliver a breech baby. Uh, so uh, there's some information on presentation on breech. I hope that was helpful. And, you know, beautiful 90-degree weather here uh, in Kona, Hawaii. You can get a flight here from Seattle. It's nonstop. So still could stop into Seattle on your way here. Thanks a lot.